So here we have the Dream and the Ruby pedals from Universal Audio, and uh, I thought I'd see how they do in a real-world test with no rose-tinted glasses, uh, and neither am I coming in this to this prejudiced. Um, I'd love for them to be fantastic devices. Uh, I assume that most of you who will be seeing this are here because you already know my channel. For those of you who discover... Uh, this channel just because of this video, I re restore and repair guitar amplifiers. I don't have time to drag up pictures of the last couple hundred vintage uh, boxes and fenders I've worked on, but uh, that's that's my world, the actual ones, the actual 60s amps, and making them sound fantastic for another generation. Uh, so I'm going to start with the Dream pedal, and I've read all the literature. I know how the things are supposed to work and that this is this is emulating a deluxe reverb. So right now I have it bypassed and I've got a Strat and it's going straight into uh, Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. <laughs> So that's the bypassed sound. Let's engage the pedal. We're hearing quite a bit of hiss. Uh, according to the literature, it has the bright cap, and I don't have any of the speaker emulations loaded. So, And I've got the treble and bass at noon, the reverb low, uh, the output uh, at noon, and the clean at the uh, lowest setting. Uh, that's supposed to be the cleanest and I don't have the tremolo on yet. Let's see what it sounds like. That's neck on a strat. Let's turn on one of the cab emulations. So that's gonna be the green back, I believe. And then that should be the uh, Oxford. And then the, uh, the EV, the big EV. So uh, right off the bat, if you turn off the cab emulation, it gets very hissy. As soon as any of the cab emulations are active, that hiss goes away. So that's nice. I still find it very bright. And before I play around with the treble and bass, let's go to the boost thing here and choose the, uh, I believe it's the lead. As soon as you engage lead and turn the boost on at all, it should turn off that bright cap. hearing a huge change there. Maybe it's the one in the middle. No, that just keeps the sound the same, just louder. And the one they're marketing is Stevie Ray. Maybe the, the top one is is the one that does just barely take off that bright cap before it boosts. Yeah, right about there. All right, I'm gonna turn the uh, boost off because I wanna see if turning the volume up makes that bright cap less uh, uh, drastic. It does, that's good. So let me find a, a neutral spot. A 
That seems quite nice. Let's uh, play around with the tone stack from there. Let's see where this begins to get some grit. It said it automatically compensates by lowering the output if you raise the input. Let's see how much it does that. It does, but not by a ton, so I think I'm going to want to do this kind of thing. It's got a little bit of squash. That's the greenback. Let's go to the Oxford. And the EV. Well, the greenback's a little more compressed than the other two, but not by a ton. Remember when I do this kind of thing, I'm not trying to do a playing demo. I'm trying to see how it reacts to elements of playing, you know, snapping the strings, really digging in, etc., playing really soft. Let's see how the trim came out on this thing. So. Some stuff like that, you really miss the interaction of the pickups and the speakers. So you'd want to have this hooked up with some really nice uh, near fields for tracking. Uh, I'm listening to some uh, Sony MDR 7506s, which are really good headphones for this purpose. But there's not going to be that interaction between the speaker and the pickup. So some of that sustained stuff just doesn't happen with this unless you have uh, that interaction. Um, the literature says that there are three other speaker models you can get um, if you register it. Now, I've not bought this. I'm borrowing this, so I'm not going to register it. So I can only play with the three presets that are here. Of them, the Greenback doesn't do much for me. The Oxford and the EV sound pretty promising. <laughs> If I had my druthers, well, all the boost options are okay. And there are performance modes you can change the, the uh, foot switches to, you know, so you can do like boost and reverb or boost and tremolo. It's in different combinations. So if you hook this up to their, their app, you can 
preset this for live performance. It's not uh, a effect on or off. Let's try one of their presets and see how it sounds. Well, it's very noisy in comparison. <laughs> Well, I think the noise floor is a little bit higher than I would expect. I'm using a, a one-spot pro that uh, can provide 500 milliamps on the output I'm using. This thing requires 400. I'm using Neutrik and Megami cables. I'm using quiet coil, Mojo Tone quiet coil pickups and a Sir Thornbucker. And I'm running with high quality cables into a uh, Focusrite, which is very quiet. So the noise that I'm getting is definitely coming from the Dream. It's quieter than many uh, non-restored Fenders, though. You know, it's so far my impression is that this does not sound or feel like a deluxe reverb, but you can get very convincing sounds to the audience, even if the response is not the same to the player. And I think this could be a real good tool for a lot of people. But if I had a uh, had an actual deluxe reverb, I wouldn't necessarily be looking to sell just because this thing is smaller and doesn't take tubes. I do wish that you could control the bright cap on and off without having to do a boost mode to do that. And I wish you had a mids control beyond the boosts which bypass the tone stack. A mids control makes a Fender circuit much more flexible. To some extent, the uh, way they've implemented boost can do that to a degree, and to some extent, uh, different speaker emulations can do that. Let's move on to the Ruby, which is their AC30. Well, I've got this set up, um, and I did a little bit of experimenting before I pressed record. Uh, the tone stack knobs for the Brilliant Channel don't quite work the way I expect them to on an AC30. Uh, whether a JMI or a TBX or any of the other issues. The o'clock positions don't translate, but the sounds are, are, are useful and fairly comparable. So we're going to start uh, with the unbypassed, the bypassed sound. Turn it on, no speaker emulation. Hiss. Turn it on to silver. Shifts the hiss down quite a bit. The blue. And the uh, green back. I think I'm gonna stick with the blue and turn the cut down a little bit to deal with some of that hiss. Not digging that room sound too much. Let's play around with that. So go to Alt. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not enjoying that. I think unless you want a special effect, that's best left down very low or off. And get your reverb effects from other things. We'll get to the vibe, yeah, the vibrato controls. That's only on the vibe channel. So that's the, the their top boost channel. There are things about it I don't dig. There are things about it that are fine. And it's, it's musically useful. And 
let's try their boost on the Top Boost channel. <laughs> They're calling it an EP boost, like an Echoplex. I find that useful enough. I mean, I could find place, ways to use that. Let's go to their normal channel and uh, see how it do. Yeah, that's what a normal channel on an AC30 can sound like sometimes, kind of dark. Doesn't have as much low end as a real one, but has a full low end. Let's see how their uh, treble booster does. I'll go to Bridge Humbucker here. It's okay. Um, again, uh, no speaker pickup interactions, so there's some limitations there. All right, and then the uh, tremolo settings. So I think I've got to be in alt mode for that. Let's see here. That's still room. So intensity. And this is supposed to be the harmonic trim. I'm not getting any of the phaser depth effect that you get from a real one. Maybe it's because I'm running it mono in, mono out. Maybe they're doing some time and, and phase relationships with the stereo thing. But a real one is a very much a mono circuit, and you get that phasing thing. I'm just not hearing it. I'm hearing a good-sounding tremolo vibrato that you can use musically. No problem. You can make music with this thing. I'm just not hearing the actual harmonic trim from an old AC-15 or AC-30. Um, like the Dream, you can reprogram what these knobs do, so you could have like tremolo on-off, boost on-off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think this is farther from the mark than the Dream. Uh, this gets good sounds. You can get, you can make music with this. You can have instant good results. 
but having played an awful lot of great sounding boxes and fenders. If you're an apartment dweller and you want to sketch out your ideas for an album and then go track with a real amp, that makes a lot of sense. If this is the only thing you can afford, this will probably delight you. But so far, all the digital stuff, while it gets better every year, seems to always just slightly not be quite as good as promised. I know that at some point, there's going to be some box that hits my, my desk and I'm going to be like, well, I guess I'm going to go out of business soon. Um, but that day has not come yet. I'm not slagging these. They sound good and you can get good results. Um, they seem, seem to be fairly well built. I haven't looked inside. I, I know it's all going to be surface mount. The jacks, I've, I've seen this style on, of jack on other things. They're okay for the price point. Very nice milled aluminum enclosures. I think they're probably going to be pretty rugged. So no complaints there. Honestly, I was hoping to be more impressed. But, you know, compared to a lot of the stuff from 10 years ago that we were told in all the articles was already so great and you don't need a tube amp again. Yeah, this is a lot better. A lot, lot better. <laughs> 